It's called instant transmission. I know. It's one of my favorite techniques. Uh, your favorites? Cooler is one of the coolest Dragon Ball Z movie villains that there is. No pun intended. He is the older brother of Frieza and was the main villain in two DBZ movies, Cooler's Revenge and The Return of Cooler. That's two amazing movies with peak fights and soundtracks. Growing up, I always wanted an action figure of Cooler, and thankfully, Tamashi cooked up Final Form Cooler two years ago. And that figure was amazing, and to be honest, I didn't think they were ever going to make a Metal Cooler, or at least so soon, but boy was I wrong, because they did. When they first teased Metal Cooler, I couldn't believe it. I was like, there's no way, but yes way. Then they fully revealed him, and I was like, holy shit. My first thoughts were, he looks sick as fuck and shiny. Yeah, it threw me off when they revealed him fully because I was not expecting that. I expected him just to be painted the colors that he was in the anime, but they went one step further to give this figure a real metal look. That's cool, but I just wasn't a fan of it. But it is metalcore, so I still got a cop because he's cool either way. Then a major problem arose. This motherfucker was $125 on Premium Bandai. So pretty much, $140 total after tax and shipping. Bruh, this is Metal Cooler, the one motherfucker you were supposed to army build, and he's one of the most expensive Dragon Ball Z SH Free Arts ever. What the fuck? I was gonna buy three of these motherfuckers, but paying over $300 up front is really hard to do as a broke college student. So, I settled on one. And I used Hobbit and got it for about $125 total. And my wallet was hurting after that. And whoever ordered three or more, like, bro, give me some of that dough you got for real. Metacore went up for pre-order in April and finally released in December. Was the long wait and high price point worth it? Let's find out. Metacore comes in a typical brown shipper that comes with a web exclusive figures. Once out of the shipper, we see Metacore in the packaging. My eyes instantly became mesmerized from how shiny and reflective he is. He's still in the box and you guys can see me reflecting off his body. Also, the background of the box is reflective, so that adds even more to it. For the box, it's your typical DBZ SH Free Arts box design with the pick of the figure on the front, and this box went with a gray and white color scheme. On the back of the box, you can see some of the poses you can put cooler in. They even mention that only one figure is included in this box, while they show you six metal coolers right in front of our faces. It'd be nice to recreate that pick without photoshopping mine into six positions and just buy five more, but like I said, this motherfucker is expensive. No army building for a broke motherfucker like me. Also, they show a pic of him on a rock piece. I hate when they do this shit. Like, they could include that rock in this fig, because this dude is expensive. And Frieza, when he first released, came with rock. And he was nowhere near as expensive. That's always annoying to me when they do that shit. But enough of this fucking box, so let's get this dude open. My first thought is, wow, he looks phenomenal and is really reflective. You can check yourself out looking at this fig. And yeah, I know y'all can see me. What's up? Fuck you. This is how he is in the movie, because when he first appeared, they show him the light reflecting off his body. This is accurate, and I'm happy they went with accuracy. Then my second thought is, what the fuck is on this figure? This dude feels like a newly opened condom. It's like he has lube on him. You might want to wear gloves while playing with him, or try to wipe off some of the oil on this. And, for your safety, please wash your hands after playing with this fig, because you do not want that stuff that's on this fig in your eyes. My next thoughts were fear. I was really scared at first to pose this guy, because of paint chipping. I ended up growing a pair of balls and moved them, and I haven't had any paint chippage yet. Also, this figure is really light and has a very difficult time standing on his own because of his tail. Either you're going to have to use the tail as a support or use a stand. Then, eventually, I overcame all the first impressions and really started to enjoy this figure. They know the sculpt and proportions on this guy. The main shiny pieces reflect a very light bluish greenish color like he is on New Namek. Would I have liked him to have just put a matte finish of that color on it instead? I probably would have just because I feel like this is a little too much. Like, you guys can see me and my phone reflecting back. This really makes figure photography hard to do with him. Then his face, neck area, arms, and waist are all nice reflective silver. For sculpt work, they sculpted some mechanical parts like under his armpit and around his abdomen area. Overall, despite my mixed feelings with this figure at first, the more I play around him, the more I enjoy him. His likeness and proportions are perfect on this figure. So now, let's look at his accessories. Metal Cooler comes with a decent amount of accessories, and one really badass one. He first comes with four interchangeable heads, a stern resting face, a smirking face, an angry teeth gritted face, and an angry yelling face. All these faces really capture his likeness amazingly, and I have no gripes with them. Then, he comes with five interchangeable pairs of hands. He comes with two fisted hands, two pointing hands, which can be used to do a finger beam or a destructive orb. Then he comes with two relaxed hands, two open tense hands, and two open key blast hands. All of his hands have nice sculpted detail into the knuckles and fingers. 
Then he comes with an extra pair of feet that can be used for disrespecting his enemy. Or you could use it to display him on a rock or something like on the box. Yeah, I'm still pissed he ain't come with that fucking rock. Then, finally, one of the most badass accessories ever to come with an action figure is his repairing arm. This is so fucking cool. Metacore is able to regenerate his limbs, and for them to include this feature is so damn badass. And that's it for accessories. I wish there was more, like a rock piece or energy effect, because for the insanely high price point this figure retails at, I'd hope for more accessories. But what he does come with is sufficient enough, and they did include a damage arm piece, so I cannot complain too much. Now, time for the scariest part of the video articulation i know this is scary for me because i don't want to chip any paint but it must be done metalcore's head and neck area gets a great range of movement all around then his shoulder pieces move so that they don't hinder the shoulder articulation the shoulders go up this far and then he has a bicep swivel and wrist articulation he then has pretty decent butterfly joint articulation at the diaphragm it moves back hardly any at all and a little bit forwards but it can move further side to side. Then it can also twist a little bit, but not too far. And then there is no waist articulation on this figure because the sculpt kind of hinders that. His legs go up this far and none at all going backwards. And then they can go really far outwards. He has a nice swivel at the thigh and double jointed knees. His ankles move down really well, but going upwards they don't move much at all. And there is no ankle tilt. Then finally his tail has joints connecting each segment of the tail and they add a little bit of movement to it. It's comparison time. First, here he is next to Final Form Core. It's amazing to see the size difference between these two. I hope Tamashi reuses this Metal Core body for just a normal fourth form cooler and potentially do it like a con exclusive fig or something so that we can get all Core's forms that we've seen in the anime. Next, here's Core next to Demonical Fit Goku. These two look fantastic next to each other. One of my favorite DBZ fights is Goku vs. Metal Core. Very happy now I can play with these two together. Also, here's a new Super Saiyan Goku next to Metal Core. Here's his younger brother Frieza next to his big brother. Whenever Mecha Frieza releases, we can have Metal Cooler and Mecha Frieza posed up. During the review, I hope I didn't sound too negative because I really do love this figure. I just wish they had a matte finish because I understand why they did the reflective paint, but I just don't like it as much. And I had just noticed that there's some paint chipping on the right thigh of my fig, so that's ass. Also, the paint being really oily just isn't good. You really do need to wash your hands after playing with this figure because you don't want that paint getting in your eyes. And possibly the most ass thing about this figure is the price point. It really makes me mad that the one figure I need to army build, I can't because of its high price point and it being a premium Bandai exclusive fig. It's gonna be hard for me to get more if I ever could afford it. But besides those main gripes, this figure is actually really good. He is beautifully sculpted and comes with a really cool accessory. And honestly, is he worth the price though? No, he is not. If you want to get this fig, I'd say do it now because, like I said, this is a premium Bandai exclusive, so you're going to have to get it off like eBay or any other aftermarket sites now. Sadly, it's going to cost you a lot of money, but if you grew up with the DBZ movies like I did and you can't resist, then I say go for it because you won't regret it even with the high price point. That's all I have to say for this review, guys. Let me know what y'all liked about this video and what y'all would like to see more of. See y'all in the next one. Peace.